Hey everybody, welcome back to Dee's Workshop. I'm Dee's. This is my workshop. There's a little workshop over there too. But today we are going to take on one of Hand Tool Rescue's screwdrivers, the scaling kit, the, the handle kit that he sells on his website. If you don't know, I mentioned him before on this channel. I don't know the guy personally, but he's funny. He's been out there as one of the original restor hand tool restoration channels out there. He plays them in like double or triple speed as he works through. There's no audio, but it's fascinating videos. Go check out his channel, Hand Tool Rescue. Eric does, Eric is his name. He does awesome stuff. He's a funny guy too. So over the years, he's done these old tools and he's restored uh, a lot of old tools, but some of the simple tools, like some screwdrivers, some little old style hand, you know, wrenches, he sells on, his, he's recreated those and he sells those on his website. The wrenches and stuff you just buy and use and they're just cool, right? They're expensive, they're not cheap, but it's helping out another guy just trying to make, uh, make, make his way and earn a little extra money on YouTube or something. Anyway, I bought all this crap just to support him. It's pretty cool stuff, and he's a he's a fun channel to watch. If you don't know him, go watch him. If you're watching this channel, I'm quite sure you've heard of his channel. He's got over a million subscribers, I think. I, I got a long way to go. Anyway, enough about that. The the hand the screwdrivers, and he has one uh, three eighths inch uh, nut driver or uh, socket driver. All of those are very similar. They they have. He sells a blank screwdriver, and he's got multiple sizes, and they're all numbered. So he has several blanks. This one is 904, and he puts them on there. Now, that'll be covered up when I put the scale on. But anyway, he, he numbers all of these parts and his wrenches and everything else. I think the only ones he didn't was the mini, the mini wrench. But anyway, he sells these as a kit. You can buy them where he, he puts the handle on for you, but if, if you're a DIY guy, probably are if you're watching his channel or this channel, this is a cool little project. He does the hard work, right? He's got a CNC or access to a CNC machine. He, he mills out all these blanks, and then he, you can buy this kit, and he'll send it to you. He's done all the hard work. He's got these CAD drawings that he includes in it. You can also go on his website, print these things out, and they are to scale for getting a handle mounted to this. You can pick any type of wood that you want, any type of material, plastic, it doesn't matter. And you, you basically cut these out, glue these to some wood, and kind of epoxy all this stuff together. He even sends the brass pins in his kit. And you can assemble all of this, and then you can sand it all down. I've done some I've done one where I did it completely by hand because I didn't have any uh, belt sanders or anything like that all the way up to where I used my drill press to mount the screwdriver in so I could sand it make it a little nicer to I've used the lathe now now that I have one to make handles anyway there's a lot of ways to do it but it's a really cool project if you like to just kind of go out in the garage and mess around this is a kit. Go check him out. He's got a website, hintoolrescue.com. So here's an example of one that I've done in the past. I used Golden Oak. As you can see, there it's very similar to this one. It's got, you know, it's a screwdriver. Here's the oak. I made these handles based off of his template, and then he supplied those brass pins, put them in here. There's a short one and a long one, so that's one thing to note. And he sends a short one, a long one. He doesn't send you extra material. Um, if you put one in the wrong hole, it's it's you're gonna probably run out a little. It's gonna mess it up. But anyway, again, it doesn't matter. It's for fun. And that's how mine have turned out. I've got several of them that look very similar. I'm gonna change up this one. I'm gonna use red oak. I've got this piece of red oak. I really like. The look of this and I, I so I'll have one that looks a little different but I don't care because I I kind of want to see how this red oak turns out if you're curious the finish that I used on mine was tongue oil it I put I don't know five six seven eight ten coats doesn't matter of tongue oil on here and it 
it kind of dries really hard and, and it adds a nice finish to that. So once you get it sanded and everything the way you want, just keep putting some tongue oil on this thing or varnish or whatever, whatever you want to do. So with that, that's going to start today's project. We're going to put a handle on this uh, screwdriver. This is the 375 thou wide version. What we need to do is cut out some blanks of my red oak. And then we're going to use some spray glue and glue these onto those so that we can cut out the actual shape. And we're going to make sure they, the scales fit onto the screwdriver handle. And once we have that done, the, there's holes on these that tell you exactly where to screw through. We'll use a drill press. So that's the first step. That's what we're going to do today. So stick with me. Hope you enjoy. And let's get started. What we're going to do is get these glued on and let them dry up and that way we can start beginning to shape our scales. I got this adhesive. This is about gone. Let's see if there's any left in here. There we go. So we glue that on. Just getting it tacked on, that's the main thing. And that way you can shape your pieces. So, got that on there. This glue is spent. Time to throw that away. Let's let that dry it set up and then we'll start shaping these out. All right, so I've talked about the shop smith in the past. This is the only thing I've used this thing for, is sanding scales. Um, it's very handy for that, but it's giant. It's really big. However, it was my dad's, he gave it to me. He didn't have any use for it anymore. And I thought maybe I'll tackle this, this winter as a restoration project. Completely disassemble it, clean it up, paint it, put it back together. I don't know. That's, that's potentially an upcoming project. But for today, we're going to use it to make these scales, fine tune these so they fit into the blank for the hand tool rescue. So let's get started.
the there's a couple things I want to do before we mix up our epoxy and get this thing all glued up. Something I've learned in the past, here's a little tip for you. Again, there are two, when he supplies these pins, and I've got other brass I could make my own, but he does supply the pins that you would need in this kit. There's a short piece and a long piece. He's trying to maximize his materials when he ships these out. Pay attention to that. But the other tip, the short one, and the long one. One thing that you might want to do is kind of mark centered a little bit of a depth on on each of these because when you put these in here well with the wood that I have it's way big it's it's oversized so I kind of have to center the pins in there to let the epoxy dry and I need to know approximately how deep to put these in and if you put one side in too deep and the other side in not deep enough then you may end up with a void and not get your not really maximize and not make it look good when it's when it's done so just kind of make a couple reference marks kind of helps out I know you know that way I can use a punch or something to kind of center up those pins because they won't be flush on either side the other thing we need to do before we get started is clean up these drill holes. Let's just do a double check, make sure our scales are fitting nicely. That looks really good. That one looks really good. It's going to be nice. It's going to turn out a lot better than that looks, but now we just need to epoxy this stuff together. We got her epoxied up. Now we just need to let it let it dry. This will be overnight. Today is the next day, and this should have set up quite well. The epoxy is no longer sticky, so let's uh, get our clamps off of here and see what we ended up with. So, here's what we ended up with. Way oversized handles, but this is a great start. The epoxy's on there. Its handles aren't going anywhere. The brass pins are tucked away in there. Now we can begin sanding this down and shaping this into a proper handle. 
and then move on to finishing with, uh, I'll probably use tongue oil like I did on the others. So with that, let's get started and we'll shape this thing and we'll use the shopsmith again like I did to get the handles where I needed them to be. This should turn out quite nice. shaped up. So it's time to put the finish on it. I usually use tongue oil, but this seems like it may be dried up, so I might have to come up with something else. Let's see if we can get a little bit out of here. Again, I put a lot of coats of this stuff on, so hopefully I can get something out of here. Well, the tongue oil's dried up. It was sealed, but uh, I don't know, must have sat or something. Time to get rid of that. So we're just gonna use some polyurethane and I'm gonna use a lot of coats. I won't bore you with all the coats. At least four, five, six coats, it doesn't matter. To me, the more the better. <laughs> But 
we're gonna give it a shot. Maybe I should test it. That'll work. So let's get this first coat on. And I'm going to use it a lot of it. Says it's fast drying. We'll put a lot on. And I want to get this on quick after I got it all finished up because I don't want this thing getting dirt and oil and grime on it. While we're waiting for the polyurethane to dry on the small screwdriver, I do have the, the other two, the large one and the medium sized one. And I never hardened the tips. He doesn't send them hardened. So that's something I want to do with all of these. And I did a little research and I believe what I need to do to get these hardened is heat these to cherry red. I just need the tips hardened. Heat them to cherry red, dip them, and quench them. Then they'll be hardened, and then I need to temper them. I'm not going to put them in the oven or any of that. I think what I'm going to do, I did see a suggestion where you can reheat these to the blue color, and then you just let them cool naturally overnight. So that's what we're going to do to try to harden these. Right now they're not hardened at all. I've kind of use this one a little bit and it's it's got just a you know it's easy to nick and ding so I just want to make an attempt to harden these why not that's part of the process so I'm going to do these two on camera the other one I'll do off camera but when I have all of them hardened I'll bring you back we'll do a summary and we'll close out this video these guys have cooled down we've got I think they're hardened so if we were to test it on so there's also a 3 8 inch driver I'm not gonna harden this one but uh, if we were to you can see it bites into this file scratches it yeah so, it bites into the stuff that's not hardened. Let's see what happens here. Oh. That skates. It's taken off the, the crusty brown, but... Yeah. That's hardened. Good deal. Definitely, definitely hardened. We'll check this piece. Yeah, that's hardened, that's skating. All right, that worked. And then what we'll do is bring, kind of clean these up, bring these up to a blue color to temper them a little bit. 
let them cool and that'll complete the hardening and the handle on the small driver. Both of them were brought to the blue stage and now we're just going to let them cool. So it's my understanding that that tempers them if you don't have an oven or something like that. So that takes care of these two pieces. Since the other one's still drying with the polyurethane, I'm going to wait on that and do it off camera just to get it done. Then we'll come back and do our final summary of the video. So this is the new handle that I made today. Um, a couple days ago anyway, it had to harden up, but I got the Varnet Clear uh, polyurethane on there. Turned out really nice. This is red oak, and this is, uh, I don't think this is red oak, but at any rate, they look very similar. The These are the hand tool rescue, hand tools drivers that uh, Eric has on his channel. You can go out there and buy them. He'll mail a kit to you, and you can do the same thing. Different woods. You can use plastics, whatever you want. Anyway, this one I did not harden. This was uh, the driver. We'll set that aside. But you can see this was the first one I did. I did it by hand. It's more squared off. I didn't have any, any way to really turn it and make it even. But it did turn out pretty well. That's tongue oil finish. Here's the medium driver. That's This one I did spin in, I believe, the drill press. And that's tongue oil as well. And this is a small driver. This is polyurethane, which is actually shinier. Looks a little more durable. But anyway, I did harden the tips on all three of these today. Uh, the, the file skates across. I like it. Cleans it up, but but they're they're hardened. And then if you if you run the different non-hardened, it, it bites. You can tell it bites. So at any rate, I just wanted to share that with you. It's not hard to uh, harden these either. If you want to give that a shot, get them cherry red, dip it in oil. And that seems to do the trick. And then if you want to temper it, you can bring it back to a blue state, a blue color, or you can do it in the oven. You can look online and find different ways to do it. At any rate, I'm going to close out this video, but there is the handle that we made in this video. Turned out pretty nice. Pretty happy with it. These, all these are fun kits to do. I encourage you to, to get them if, if you want to spend a little extra money and have a project in the garage. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate you subscribing, and I hope to see you on the next one.